And I do want to mention this. I did watch. Uh, you guys know that I'm a big comic book nerd. I'm a, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of a lot of the comic book movies. I'm more of a Marvel guy than a DC guy. Uh, but I did watch the Snyder Cut with uh, with a couple of friends of mine this weekend. Uh, the four hour marathon of uh, of the Snyder Cut of of what is Zack Snyder's true vision for the Justice League. And uh, you can see the more detailed in in depth review that uh, we did with all the spoilers over on my good friend Vincent Didiano's channel, The Orange Reel. That video just dropped today. I'll probably share it on, on all the social medias later today. But if you go and check out The Orange Reel, uh, Vincent's a, a good friend of mine. He uh, we live together, and two of our other good friends, uh, Joe and Zach Funk from Is It Worth the Sandwich. Uh, decided to to get together and we did this review together and it was a lot of fun. It was it was uh, a, a really fun review. But I, I do want to say, boy, howdy, is that I uh, I thought it was going insane because I watched the movie and I was like, this movie is objectively fucking bad. <laughs> like it's not a good movie, and it sounds like you know some film school student discovered what slow motion and desaturation is and just decided to use the shit out of that for four straight hours. Uh, is it better than the Frankenstein monster movie uh, that the Justice League was originally back in 2017? Absolutely. It's because you have one director and his vision. So there is consistency in that, but it's a very inconsistent movie. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, and this might not be a popular opinion here, but I'm, I'm going to express it anyway because it's it's troubling. There's a particular scene. Here's a spoiler. Um I'm giving you guys a big spoiler. So if you don't want to hear what's happened in the Justice League or any of the special details, now would be the time to exit the video and come back in about three minutes. Uh, but there's a scene where, you know, Superman has died and, and Martha Kent and Lois Lane uh, sit down in her apartment. And they have this conversation about going through grief. And it's this really heartfelt moment. And it's a moment in the movie where I was like, holy shit, Zack Snyder, you can actually do something that is filled with emotion that makes you feel for these characters this is the first time that in your entire franchise that I have like actually felt something about these characters. Right. And then, you know, they're talking about overcoming grief and what it is to be in the pro like what the process of grief is for each of them. And, and then it Martha Kent leaves and it turns out that it was Martian Manhunter the whole time, which to me cheapens that interaction. Right. It cheapens this conversation about grief and the whole legend around uh, this movie is that Zack Snyder worked on this film. And unfortunately, uh, he lost his daughter to suicide, which is a very tragic thing. It's an awful thing. I, I, I lost a best friend to suicide. And it's something that you kind of live with forever. Right. You never really get over it there. You know, I can I can kind of say without feeling like terrible about it is I would say that that's driven a lot of my motivations over the last decade uh, since my friend uh, unfortunately uh, left this plane of existence. So, and, and I miss him every day. I miss him a lot. So I, I definitely feel like, you know, Zack Snyder went through a lot of pain and what Warner brothers did because they wanted him to work on the movie and get it ready for release and so on and so forth. Um, they they dropped them from the project, which I think was unfair, which, I you know, it's it's like I think if you said that, uh, I think the fans would have been like, dude, take the time to grieve and then we'll we'll see this movie when it comes out, when, you know, after you're done with, you know, when when you feel like you're ready to work on it again. But the studio didn't do that. They put Joss Whedon, who is already a troubling character, and we'll get into that uh, at some other date. But he put this thing. And. So to me, you know, you you put a, a portion in your movie that very genuinely talks about grief and then you cheapened it with this fan service thing that the studio wanted. And it was really confusing. And he did this whole thing where he like donated to suicide charities. Right. And the film is like dedicated to his. Um, to his daughter that passed away and all those things are beautiful. So it was really confusing to me why you decided to 
take the most genuine part of your movie that talks about grief, grief that I'm sure that you went through as well, and then cheapen it with a fan service moment that the studio wanted, which was arbitrarily dropped in with no prior character development, no prior like it's just like he's there and it felt really kind of gross to me and it felt like you know it, 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 the, the suicide charities feel a little bit more disingenuous because of that like this is your movie this is your vision if there's a portion of the movie where you felt like you were kind of hamstrung by studio restrictions well the studio it's not being released by the studio anymore it's being released independently by you on HBO Max, which like that movie is one of the central things why people got HBO Max. So why would you just not leave that part as is? Why would you need to make make that into some bullshit fan service thing that had nothing to do with anything and cheapens this really like intimate, beautiful part of the movie? So that's one of the major problems I have with it. Um, you know, so I watch it don't watch it uh i i particularly didn't think this was a good movie like objectively it's not a good movie comparatively to the frankenstein it's a better movie uh but you know if you have four hours where you feel like you want to sit down and and pretty much make a day of it go for it um but I but I thought I was going nuts because there were so many people were like, this is one of the best superhero movies ever. And I was like, are we watching the same fucking movie? Because <laughs> this is nuts. But we go into it a, a, in a lot more um, in-depth detail over on uh, the Orange Reel over on Vincent Didiano's channel. So if you're interested in that, go go check that out. And Holly, thank you for saying that. Uh, yeah, um, I, I lost my buddy. Um, a uh, good friend of mine, he was he was like a brother to me. And, and you know, it, it's again, it's not something you you get over. It's just something you learn to live with. Uh, it's it's just sort of like a piece of you that is no longer there. Uh, but uh, but weirdly enough, will always be with you. If, if the, any of that makes sense, it, it makes sense in my head. But I don't know if that makes sense when I say it out loud. But I just kind of wanted to throw that uh, uh, little little aside about uh, Justice League because I, I didn't I didn't mention that in the I I forgot to mention that rather in the uh, in the spoiler review we did over on uh, over on Vincent Didiano's channel. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.